Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my homeroom farming channel. If you are looking for a helpful, friendly vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today I'm going to harvest my vermi bag, Little Mammoth, and then I'm going to show you how I use my castings. And then we can come back and feed up the worms so that they can make more glorious soil amendments, aka worm poo. All right, first things first, this is only going to take me about five minutes, so probably less time than it takes me to harvest any of my other systems. And I'm going to use my handy dandy fork here, and I am just going to grab enough to where it is even with this line here. And the gloves are still here because of the injury to my thumb. It is broken. Um, but that's, it's not broken, broken, you know, like dangling off my hand broken. So I'm going to call it, you know, good enough. Okay, so then we're going to go and dig. Not going past this center line here. And the goal is to harvest about five gallons of the uh, finished castings. Now, when I use these, I use the the sifted castings for my bonsais and house plants but then I use the the larger chunks to turn that into worm tea to use in my garden which not only feeds the soil and the plants but is also really good for managing disease and a little bit of pest control all right let's switch to the other side here and I just slide the mortar tray over, zip that out. The bottom of it gets pretty, pretty dried out. But if you remember, if you watched last time, I added about three gallons of water to this because the system was, with the air conditioning, just getting a little too dry. So let me seal up here. If you uh, looked at my community post, I do have a new puppy dog. And he is providing some uh, help at this moment in the background. Uh, not not super helpful, but um, you know, he likes to think he, he's helping. There we go. So we've got all of this, and you can't you shouldn't go too far up because otherwise the integrity of the entire system could fall right down. And uh, you don't want that to happen because then you'd have to restart the whole system. All right, let's take a look and see what we've got. Shadow, you're moving the light. Dude, no. So let's look and see what we got. And we'll take it outside and use it on the plants. All right, so let's take a look at the house plants and the bonsais. And what we do to add the worm castings to those pots. It's a little bit different for different things. So I'm going to show you the bonsais, the house plants, and then we're going to go over to my garden and show you how I use the worm castings there. Okay, so let's have a closer look. Okay, so here's what we have is a hot mess of house plants, baby figs, and slightly neglected bonsais. So this is a jasmine bonsai. It's a semi-cascade. It's flowering right now. That smells really good. This particular guy, aside from needing weeded, this guy here gets worm castings about three times a year. And then when I repot it every five years, it will get a big heaping of uh, scoop. So right here I have the finely sifted worm castings and I just put that in there. I put about a half a cup, two little handfuls in there and just settle it around, you know, 3, 360 around the whole side of the plant. And then when it rains or I water it, then that will flow through the plant. Right here is my juniper bonsai. And it looks like I've lost a, a branch over winter. This one is a, probably about 10 years old now. And it will get kind of a double dose. It doesn't have real soil in here because the idea of a bonsai is to keep it small and if you give it too much nutrients then it's going to grow like nuts and be a for real tree. Uh, bonsais are not a different kind of tree. They are simply a normal sized tree that you keep in a pot which then makes it stay small. 
And then looking at something that everybody else has, these are jade plants. This is a ponytail, ponytail palm, and here's a spider plant. And they get about the same thing as the bonsais do. They get about a handful per plant. In here we've got three plants, so it'll get a couple handfuls. And then the spider plant is just little, so it will just get a little tiny handful. Okay, so here we are with Grandpa Pepper and looking at how I feed him. I feed him some sort of blood and bone meal. And then also in addition to that, we're gonna give him some worm tea. And I'm not just gonna put it on the soil for him, I'm actually gonna give him a drench and that will help protect his leaves from any kind of disease or bugs. Not 100%, but that's pretty good, surprisingly so. So I have about five gallons of water there, and I'm gonna put in about three handfuls of castings. And then on top of that, what I'm gonna do is I have some, uh, this is just uh, seaweed, fish and seaweed fertilizer. It doesn't have to be any particular brand. I will put that in the, the links below. But then I'm just gonna go in here and stir it up. And ideally you let it sit for a little while and dissolve. This water is nice and warm. It's been sitting out for a while, so I don't really need to do that. And then let's go ahead and give him a drink. Just kind of let it settle for a little bit so that you don't get the big chunks on it. Maybe start off by just giving a few drinks around the base. And then when it settles down a little bit, then you can get some and pour it over the plant. Grandpa Pepper's been getting this treatment for 10 years. So I can confidently say that this plant has exceeded expectations with a little help from my worms. Go ahead, get the whole thing saturated. And of course, you know, you don't have to wait until it rains or anything to harvest again because this is all natural fertilizer and sort of a pest preventative or control. If you have any questions, go ahead and put that down in the comments below. If you have any questions about the worm tea or any of that, also put that in the comments below. I will go ahead and put all the products that I use in the pinned comment so that you can see what I buy. And even if you don't use the links that give my channel commission, you will at least have the best information that I can provide you with. All right, guys, see you back inside. Okay, here we are back at the top. It's been about four weeks since we fed these guys. Gave them about a gallon of water. No, we gave them three gallons of water and about a gallon of food and about six gallons of bedding. So let's see where they've got. So we just harvested, so everything's gonna fall down towards the center a little bit. And let's have a look. We did a about a two liter feed of pureed food last time, and then we did I don't know, probably a gallon of, of, you know, like scraps. So we're gonna just kind of bang all this down so that it gets settled down to the bottom again first before we feed. Still have plenty of bedding. Won't have to worry about giving them any new bedding today. Certainly more than enough right now, but the goal is to kind of break down the big hole I made in the middle so that it all sits nice again. Because otherwise, if you leave that big gaping hole in the bottom, then it will dry out significantly just due to the amount of airflow. All right, looking good. Looks like there's really no food left. Looks like they are getting into some of the long-term food. It also sounds like my dog has brought a squeak toy into the wormery, or he's chewing on the camera. Oi! Okay, well we better get this uh, feeding done quick before he eats all of my equipment. So what we have here is about a gallon and a half of random kitchen scraps. So we've got the tomatoes, yard-long beans. They actually are really, really good 
Uh, but note, if you do have any growing, they cook much faster than regular green beans. So let that be a lesson to you. I made some potatoes and beans and um, this bean cooks way faster than this bean and this is dehydrated. They were about the same thickness to begin with. Then tomatoes, eggshells, and some bananas, you know, just the usual stuff. This should get the approximately five to six pounds of African night crawlers. Nice and fed in here for the next three or four weeks. And I'm gonna get them nice and covered up. We didn't have any flyers when we saw this when we first opened, so that is amazing. When I come in to give them some water in about a week or two, I will be using the BTI water just to make sure we don't end up with a gnatpocalypse again. Okay, well, if you like the African night crawlers um, or this bag system and wanna see more about that, I have a playlist that you can watch right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day. Guardian of the Worm Farm.